Our guest this week is none other than our old friend Bob Murphy. Bob is actually in town here in Auburn this week, teaching at Mises University, helping us out with our new Mises Boot Camp concept. And he's also got a new book he's promoting called Choice, Cooperation, Enterprise, and Human Action. And not surprisingly, it is based off Mises' human action. I've heard it described as being what economics in one lesson was to Bastiat's law. Bob's new book is to human action. So it's about 280 pages. It's a much easier read than human action, but it's not a substitute per se. It's actually designed to get readers interested in Mises and reading human action, perhaps with a clearer eye from having read Bob's book. So we're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to him about his fantastic new opportunity at Texas Tech and all things Bob Murphy. So please stay tuned for an interview with one of our favorite guests. Bob Murphy, welcome back to Mises Weekends. Thanks for having me, Jeff. A pleasure. I think it's been maybe a year or so since we last talked to you. And and for those who don't know, Bob is here in Auburn this week. Um, You're teaching Mises U. Uh, You're teaching at our Austrian Economics Boot Camp. Uh, you've got a brand new book out, and then on top of all that, you have the pressure of, of performing karaoke. It's not merely performing, but I think I'm going to be DJing it as well. So it's, yeah, I'm wearing many hats this week. So you are wearing many hats. Since we last spoke, um, tell us about what's been going on with you, uh, and and we know that you've got a new opportunity at Texas Tech as well. Sure. So hey, I'm moving to Texas Tech uh, for the fall semester, and it will be there for the whole academic year. And yeah, it's I'm looking forward to working with Ben Powell and all the guys down there. And it's it's a research position, but I'll be available for if you know, students want to talk about their thesis or what have you. And there's certainly they get, I hear they have a human action reading group. So sounds like my kind of place. Your new book is called Choice, Cooperation, Enterprise and Human Action. And I've heard it, heard it described as being what Economics in One Lesson was to Bastiat's Law. This book is to human action. Was that your intention in writing it or and is that accurate? Well, that's very a flattering thing that someone must have told you. Uh, yeah, what we are trying to do is pr- the the way the project was presented to me is we want something that summarizes the essential insights of human action, but yet could plausibly be assigned to a college undergraduate course where they they were econ majors. And because you know, human action is I think it's one of the most important economics books ever, certainly in the twentieth century, but it is a bit intimidating for various reasons. And so I tried to to boil it down to make it short, accessible language and not assume any prior knowledge for the reader. And I I think that that we've accomplished that somewhat in this book. Well, as you can imagine, this is something we struggle with in teaching econ, right? We're in an era where a lot of people aren't going to read 900 page books. It's just the reality of our social media driven uh, consumer consumption society. Um, So is the answer to that writing 300 page books that are (laughs) Condensed versions, or is the answer to that to use this as the gateway drug? I I think it's going to do both. So I think that there are going to be some people who are going to read Choice who never would have read Human Action in the first place. And so we're not, you know, losing anything in that way. And I think they're going to get across the the main essentials of what Mises had to offer. But then, yeah, I think some people, uh, one thing that, that this book will do, I believe, is even for like mainstream economists who wonder, what's all this hubbub about Austrian economics? Why do you guys... How come some of you like this Mises guy so much? I think if they give this book a chance, you know, you're, you're going to get drawn into it. And there is enough meat there that even anyone from a, just the responsible layperson who wants to know more about how does the world work, how does the economy work, up to even professional economists who just haven't really read Mises in the original can uh, gain a lot from this. Well, not only with this book, but in your career generally, you've done a lot of writing and speaking for a lay audience. And I think that that's one of the strengths of the Austrian school is that we're not as cliquish. We're more willing to teach and, and approach lay audiences with, with a message of econ as opposed to academic audiences only. You know, but looking back, um, do you feel like that that was the right choice? You think of of Rothbard and Mises, who are now much better known than many of their contemporaries who took more traditional academic routes, um, simply because they did reach out and talk to a lay audience. Right. I think it is. It's understandable for people who are if trying to get tenure or something that, you know, trained economists at, at universities. Obviously, they're going to want to publish in peer reviewed journal articles. They, they have to do that sort of thing. But I do think, for one thing, it's just in terms of my own career and what have what what I've done, yes, it would have been gratifying to spend more time just working on certain real technical areas and get them, try to get them published in certain journals. And I, yeah, I might have thought, like, oh, wow, that, that proves how smart I am. But I don't think that would have been the best use of my time, that I think 
I mean, look at where we are right now. People are still don't believe in free trade. We're, they're wanting to double the minimum wage or more so. Uh, I think it's going to have drastic consequences. Certainly, we as Austrians, we disagree strongly with what central banks around the world did since 2008. So these are all things where the theory in the hands of Mises and Rothbard, we don't need to advance it beyond that. The important thing is trying to take what they did and you know bring it to the general public. And I have found that you mentioned you know talking to a lay audience. Certainly, since the crisis struck, I've been in various capacities going around talking to crowds, people in the financial sector, or just you know let's say upper middle class people wanting wanting to know what do I do with my money that sort of conference or seminar, and the the Austrian message clicks with those people. When I go through a diagnosis of the Austrian theory of the business cycle, I might not use that terminology, but I might just explain this is where the housing bubble came from and so on. People say, yeah, I knew something was screwed up. I just didn't know what it was. Thank you. Now I understand it much better. Like it really resonates with the average person who knows the guys on CNBC don't know what they're talking about. But just practically speaking, nobody reads peer-reviewed journals other than a few economists are, are interested in that particular niche. I mean, I would wager that but you, Bob Murphy, are far better known because of your career path than you would be if you were right now um, a professor at some state university. I mean, that's probably true. And then, of course, the people at the state universities would be real elitist about it and say, yeah, but who cares whether your are Taylor Swift's popular, too? Ha, ha. So, you know, <laughs> so what you're saying is certainly true. And like I say, it's, I do think that's the most important use of my time. Are you comparing yourself to Taylor Swift? Drawing an analogy between Bob Murphy and Taylor Swift? Well, I think we're just all along the same continuum. Yes. There's a continuum. Yeah, I would say there's a continuum. Um, I'm curious, you know, at one point I interviewed Guido Holzman about his process of writing the the Mises biography, which was an incredible journey for him. I just wonder if, if writing this book caused you to go back and reread portions of Human Action. Did it get you a little more in Mises' head by necessity to write this? Oh, yeah. I, I, I went through and read the thing cover to cover again. Just I mean, I read that book, I want to say at least four or five times cover to cover. The, the previous time was when I did the, the study guide for the Mises Institute. And incidentally, people keep emailing and saying, is this different? Yes, choice is different from that. And so uh, by all means, by both of them. But it's uh, one thing that really and, and this is going to sound silly because people would know this who've read Mises. But I, the importance he placed on calculation, it wasn't just a matter of efficiency. Right? I mean, he was making civilization itself depend on man's ability to apply quantitative cardinal numbers to the affairs of, you know, property relations, and you can't do it directly, right? Because, you know, value is subjective. You can't just do it direct. You need money prices. That's the, that's the way those two things get linked, where you can deploy arithmetic to matters of the economy. You need to have money prices in order for that, that to work or to even be possible. And that really came through on this reading. Uh, and then there were even just some finer points of economic theory about the relationship between rent and interest and so on that, I mean, I I knew of that, but I just reading it this time for whatever reason, it, it's little passages, the little throwaway lines Mises had where I was like, wow, this guy really was on top of several different areas of just pure theory that I didn't catch upon the first few readings. Well, one thing I like right off the bat is when I look at the index, the table of contents, the way you've chosen to structure the book, to order it, is a lot less daunting than when you start re leafing through the table of contents of human action. Right. So because this is 300 some odd pages, obviously we did have to, we couldn't cover everything. I couldn't paraphrase everything. And there's some stuff in here where I had to do a little digression and explain the, the context before explaining what Mises' contribution was in that section. So yeah, we did have to make some tough decisions. And uh, I, what what I did with this is I thought, especially for this time we, we have now, that I really wanted to get across Mises' understanding of money, banking, capital theory, and then all those things put together, you need to know so you can understand his theory of the business cycle. So that was the, you know, as opposed to, you know, what's wrong with minimum wages. I mean, Mises does talk about that, but that's not so important that you can get that from other sources. So that's really what I, my goal was with this, is I said, when someone's done with this, I want them to really understand why Austrians are so concerned about what central banks have been doing since 2008. That's what I think, why the Austrian school is so important right now and what they offer that even other main uh, free market schools don't. To go back to a point you just made, describe for us the difference between this and the study guide. The study guide that you did for the Institute is obviously shorter. So uh, uh, distinguish the two. Okay. So the study guide really just follows 
the human action almost section by section. So a, a, a more of a cliff note. Right. So just, just distills what he's, you know, put it in, in easier, more accessible language, but basically just looks at a section. What did Mises say here? Let me paraphrase that and boil it down. Y yeah. Cliff notes is a, is a way of putting it. And then, they, you know, it had questions and so on, like to study questions to make sure you're getting the big points. But there I, w I was not trying to independently teach the same material Mises was. I was really just trying to explain. So someone who is reading human action side by side with the study guide can make sure they're getting the, the big picture and they're not missing something important. Whereas this book, Choice, is a standalone one that it follows human action somewhat closely in terms of the ordering of the material. But it, it is more saying I'm writing a book from scratch, if you will, that covers a lot of the same material that's in human action. And then the, another main difference is Choice has a lot of illustrations or examples of things to sort of illustrate what's going on in human action. Like, for example, this idea of free banking, where Mises says in human action, this is a paraphrase, that the idea of free enterprise never should have been abandoned in the field of banking. And then he just gives some quick lines about if one bank tried to expand more quickly than the others in terms of issuing fiduciary media, the notes would quickly get returned to it by a clearinghouse process and the, you know the bank would be ruined. He doesn't really spell that out. He kind of just assumes the reader is familiar with that literature. So in the study guide, I, I kind of just paraphrase what Mises said and moved on. In choice, I go through like a real drawn out numerical step by step example to make sure the reader can see exactly why if one bank tried to expand more than the others, it would run out of reserves very quickly. And so I think if you hadn't read that elsewhere, you might not have realized just that deep mechanism and how amazing the market is and all, you know, what we learn about the purpose of central banking is the exact opposite. That in reality, central banking was there to form a cartel and foster credit expansion, not to limit the wildcat free, you know, free banks that would inflate on their own. And we need the government there to protect us from those crazy inflationist banks. And no, it's the other way around. Well, let's talk about Mises' achievement in writing a, a magnum opus of this scope and scale in a language other than his native tongue. He writes this earlier sort of proto version, National Economy, obviously thinking and writing in German. Mm -hmm. Whereas here he has uh, his wife, uh, his faithful wife, helping him with the typing task. But it must have been a, an enormous challenge to, to wrestle with conceptually dense material in a brand new language of sorts for him in middle age. Right. What, what is interesting, though, is I don't mean to, you know, when we say it's intimidating and whatnot, I don't want to suggest that you, you oh, don't try to read it. It actually, he's he's even funny at certain parts. You know, it's a certain type of humor, but it really is, you know, when when, you, when the style finally clicks with you and you get what he the way he writes, it is fun to read even certain parts, just his real formal language, but yet he's, he's just, you're blown away by the, his incredible depth of knowledge, and you're right. I can't imagine having written the one thing in German and then having to do it again in a different language that I would just say, wow, that was just too much. You know, that, that would take a decade out of my life, you know, my lifespan probably. So uh, it is impressive to see him do that. And it's I mean, it, it is amazing, not the least of which is because several of the areas where he's sort of summarizing economic theory on that topic, he himself contributed importantly to s certain of those those areas, like the most prime example being monetary theory where I think it's fair to say Mises, you know, united micro and macro and applied the new subjective theory of marginal utility to money, whereas really that hadn't been done before him. And so that's just one of the things he summarizes in human action where he had earlier played a seminal role in that development. So the book Choice is available from the Independent Institute. It's available at the Mises Institute website. Bob, I assume it is available via Amazon.com? Yeah, it's for on those Amazon. So inclined. Yep. So what's what's on the horizon? What's next for Bob Murphy? We talked about you're heading to Texas Tech and you're going to be living in Texas. How do people find you? What are your websites? What are the ways to get in contact and read and keep up with Bob Murphy? Sure. The safest thing is to go to consultingbyrpm.com. That's my main personal blog where I'll I have various outlets where I publish stuff regularly, but I always put it there. So you can if you find want to find out where I am, just go to the consultingbyrpm.com. Bob, thanks so much for coming to Auburn this week and spending some time with us. Our students at Mises U love you, and we will uh, keep in touch and follow your advancement at Texas Tech.